evening guys so now i am going to start with a fresh batch 2020 batch who have come to your pre final year now probably at the beginning of the year you will feel difficult to adjust into this ent of the you are going to enter first time into a clinical subject and this clinical subject basically is very easy you take ent or you take ophthal one of the most easiest subjects in your clinical core topics are your ENT and ophthalm and probably you all know that when the next exam is going to be implemented ENT and ophthalm is given a very big role to play because almost 60 questions are going to come from ENT 60 questions are going to come from ophthalm so that uh, gives us a very important idea that you have to be thorough in ENT and ophthalm to get a good score in your next exam and that is the reason why I am focusing upon this 2020 batch Okay, so may, may it be a CBME batch, may it be a normal batch, the topics are not going to be changed. And among those topics, one of the most important, most very important frequent topic in your exam is your uh, middle year anatomy. So you won't uh, believe that this question, year, middle year anatomy is asked as a essay questions too in your university exams. That shows you how much important essay that too from a basic science they are asking so that is the reason why we are going to check out with this middle year anatomy so let's begin with an introduction embryology boundaries of middle year compartments of middle year then we will talk about the mastoid and ossicles then we will see as usual our muscles and a blood supply nerve supply and lymphatic drainage okay so these are the topics under which we are going to stay study today and let me begin with the introduction Middle ear is nothing but it is a cuboidal shaped compartment with almost like a six walls. So it is more often regarded as a middle ear cleft. Why? Because this middle ear cleft is going to be consisting of middle ear along with your eustachian tube and uh, aditus ad antrum and your mastoid antrum and mastoid arcels. Together you call it as a middle ear cleft. Okay. So this middle ear is like a space is around 1 to 2, two centimeter cube air filled cavity that is going to house ossicles, muscles and nerves. This is lined by mucous membrane. Remember, it is again divided into three parts. Mesotympanum, epitympanum, hypotympanum. What are the three? Again, repeat along with me. Mesotympanum, epitympanum and hypotympanum. Clear? So with this introduction, let me go into the embryology. So let me recall your uh, embryology which you studied in your first year. Your neck is going to be developed from the six brachial arches. In that six brachial arch, fifth one disappears usually. The remaining four are there, right? Okay, so they are going to form, okay, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. You know that, right? Ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm. Ectoderm, you call it as a cleft. Middle uh, mesoderm, you call it as an arch. And endoderm, you are going to call it as a pouch. Okay, now coming to your mesoderm. That is your mesodermal arch. So see this picture, your mesodermal parch, okay, you are going to have a cleft, you are going to have a pouch and middle you are going to have an arch. This arch, you know that you have this first arch, second arch, right. First arch gives rise to malleus incus and second arch gives rise to supra structures of the stapes. So stapes alone, it is going to be formed by both mesoderm as well as endoderm. Okay, so this say stapes, so suprastructure is formed from the second brachial arch and your uh, first endodermal pouch is going to give, the first endoderm pouch is going to give tubopar, okay, the first endodermal pouch, it is going to give you this uh, stapes or the other part, okay, food plate of your stapes. Here now, I will tell you the reason, your food plate of your stapes, it is not going to be developed from the mesoderm, it is not going to be developed from the endoderm, instead it is going to be developed from the oat capsule okay wow. so first in a solar mesodermal pouch ectodermal cleft and it gives you all your ectodermal surface skin and you are going to have this lobe and all right so that is going to be formed when you consider this middle ear alone middle ear la mesoderm mesoderm la middle ear la like structures incus stapes malleus okay wow. in the malleus incus is formed on the first arch stapes or a suprastructure motor formed from the second arch and then your food plate of stapes that is going to be developed from the inner ear bone so it is not going to be the middle ear it is going to be formed from the inner ear bone and that inner ear bone is, called, is formed by the otic capsule 
ஓகே வா ஸோ தென் வாட் டஸ் திஸ் என்டோடர்மல் பவுச் கிவ் ரைஸ் டு என்டோடர்மல் பவுச் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் என்டோடர்மல் பவுச் அண்ட் யுவர் செகண்ட் என்டோடர்மல் பவுச் ஃபியூசிங் டுகெதர் டு ஃபார்ம் அ டியூபோ டிம்பானிக் ரீசஸ் திஸ் டியூபோ டிம்பானிக் வை ஐ காட் அஸ் டியூபோ அண்ட் டிம்பானிக் டியூபோ மீன்ஸ் ப்ராக்சிமல் பார்ட் ஃப்ரம் த ஈஸ்ட் ஏஷியன் டியூப் அண்ட் டிம்பானிக் மீன்ஸ் டிஸ்டல் பார்ட் விச் இஸ் கோயிங் டு ஃபார்ம் யுவர் மிடில் இயர் கேவிட்டி மேஸ்டர்ட் அண்ட் ட்ரம் ஸோ இதெல்லாம் சேர்த்து நம்ம என்ன சொல்றோம் மிடில் இயர் கிளப்ட் அப்படின்னு சொல்றோம் இதெல்லாம் சேர்த்து நம்ம என்ன சொல்றோம் மிடில் இயர் கிளப்ட் சொல்றோம் ஸோ ஆசிக்கல்ஸ் ஐ வாண்ட் அட்டைன் த அடல்ட் கான்ஃபிகரேஷன் பை ட்வெண்ட்டி வீக்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஜெஸ்டேஷன் clear up now come into the development of mastoid so what happens your mastoid develops from the superficial superficial squamous and deep petrous part of temporal bone remember your mastoid is formed by the superficial squamous and deep tympanic or deep petrous part of your tympanic bone in between two parts you going to have that suture so that is called as petrosquamous suture why i want to talk about this petrosquamous suture usually disappears early okay so it disappears early adu persist as na adu or condition irukku i'll tell you later now your mastoid is a spongy bone which is going to contain multiple air cells so mastoid is incompletely developed at birth and it should be complete at the age of 18 years okay your mastoid antrum is a largest and most prominent one and it develops from the first and second pouch it is present at birth and it attains adult configuration why now i come to the embryological clinical aspect which i discussed earlier so i asked you the petrosquamous suture has to disappear if at all it is not disappeared then you call it as a corner septum so corner septum is usually asked as a two mark for you guys okay corner septum so while removing a disease from your mastoid if this corner septum is going to be persisting your surgeon may confuse it with the medial wall of your antrum and in the fear of entering into the posterior cranial fossa they may stop the surgery at corner septum and corner septum la nama stop pantona unga disease incomplete clearance irukum from your mastoid and therefore your disease will be persisting so the tip of the mastoid usually develops by 2 years of age and facial now exists just below your mastoid tip so remember your facial mastoid is going to be dip develops by age of 2 years and your facial now is going to be just below your mastoid tip and it turns horizontally towards your parotid gland if the mastoid tip is absent below 2 years of age oru vela mastoid tip absent a irundha na eppa below 2 years of age and your facial now is going to lie superficial just below the skin so okay well, therefore in a child with a posterior auricular abscess the incision should be superior or horizontal why to avoid damage to facial now so remember usually 2 years or your mastoid development irukku mastoid keela da facial now povu horizontal turn mani parotid gland ku povu okay if your mastoid tip is absent oru vela rendu vayasu keela na unga facial nerve is going to be superficial adinala posterior auricular abscess irukra patient 2 years keela irukka patient ku incision should be given superior and horizontal why to avoid damage to the facial now clear ah now coming to the boundaries of your middle ear so middle ear wall abdingaradhu it is going to consist of six sides roof floor anterior posterior medial lateral remember anterior you call it as a keratic wall posterior you call it as a mastoid wall medial lateral irukku roof irukku floor irukku idha unga roof ya so roof vandu pathinga ungalku middle cranial fossa irukum so adha temporal lobe of your brain adukku keela you going to have the tegment tympani so the roof of the middle ear you going to have the roof called as tegment tympani why because they are going to be protecting you they are going to be protecting your middle ear rather than middle ear i would tell that it is protecting the brain so that the infections in the middle ear does not reach your middle cranial fossa okay so it contributes to the anterior slant of the petrous part of temporal bone now i move towards the floor remember your floor is like this okay so your floor is going to be having it is a very thin plate it is going to separate your middle ear from the jugular bulb along with your 9th and 10th cranial nerve the tympanic segment of the naso you tympanic segment of your okay glossopharyngeal nerve it is going to enter your middle ear through the floor along with sympathetic plexus so okay va so they are going to form the tympanic plexus on promontory so this is going to give the sensory supply to your whole middle ear including your middle ear cavity eustachian tube and medial surface of tympanic membrane okay va so this is your medial surface so on the medial surface vandha pathinga idha so vandha there is a roof okay 15 mm irukum posterior 15 mm 
ஃப்ளோர்ல ஜுகுலார் ஃப்ளோர் சொல்லுவோம் லேட்ரல்ல டிம்பேனிக் மெம்பிரேன் இருக்கு மீடியல்ல லாப்ரின் இருக்கு ஓகேவா சோ உங்களுக்கு வந்து பாத்தீங்கன்னா இந்த ஆன்டீரியர் பார்ட்ல இட் இஸ் வெரி நேரோ அட் த மிடில் சோ மேல சிக்ஸ் மில்லிமீட்டர் இருக்கு ரூஃப் ஃப்ளோர் ஃபோர் மில்லிமீட்டர் இருக்கு நடுவுல வந்து டூ மில்லிமீட்டர் நேரோ ரவுண்ட் ஆகுது தட் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் கொம்போ தட் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் கொம்போ யூஎம் பிஓ Okay, wow. now coming to the anterior wall. And remember, this is called a Jacobson's nerve. Okay, this is called a Jacobson's nerve. So what happens usually is, your tympanic segment of glossopharyngeal nerve, it is going to enter into your middle ear, along the floor, through the sympathetic, along with sympathetic plexus, it is going to form the tympanic plexus. Okay, in the tympanic plexus form, on the promontory. So on the ninth nerve, glossopharyngeal nerve, and they enter out of the left. அதுக்கு பேர் தான் ஜாக்கப்சன்ஸ் நவ் அப்படின்னு சொல்றாங்க அதுக்கு பேர் என்ன சொல்றாங்க ஜாக்கப்சன்ஸ் நவ் சொல்றாங்க நவ் கமிங் டு ஆன்டீரியர் வால் வெரி வெரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் பைவா கொஷின் ஆன்டீரியர் வால்ல என்னென்ன ஸ்ட்ரக்சர்ஸ் இருக்கு ஏன்னா நீங்க ஃபுளோர் ரூஃபும் ஈஸியா சொல்லிடுவீங்க ஓகேவா பட் ஆன்டீரியர் வால்ல மொத்தம் மூணு ஓப்பனிங் இருக்கு என்னென்ன ஓப்பனிங் ஸோ ஓப்பனிங் டு த கேனல் ஆஃப் டென்சர் டிம்பானை அதுக்கப்புறம் யூ ஆஃப் திஸ் ஈஸ்டேஷன் டியூப் ஓப்பனிங் அண்ட் கேனல் ஆஃப் யூகியர் ஓகே கேனல் ஆஃப் யூகியர் ஸோ இந்த ஆன்டீரியர் வால் அப்படிங்கிறது அதர்வைஸ் யூ கால் டஸ் கெரட்டிக் வால் ஸோ ஆன்டீரியர் வால் யூ கால் டஸ் கெரட்டிக் வால் என்ன ரீசன் யூ ஆஃப் திஸ் கேனல் ஆஃப் யூகியர் ரைட் ஸோ தட் ஆஸ் அ இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் பாயிண்ட் விச் இஸ் கோயிங் டு கிவ் த நேம் கெரட்டிக் வால் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் அ வெரி தின் பிளேட் விச் இஸ் கோயிங் டு செப்பரேட் யோர் மிடில் இயர் ஃப்ரம் யோர் இன்டர்னல் கெரட்டிக் ஆர்ட்ரி ஸோ நாலு இம்பார்ட்டன் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர்ஸ் இருக்கு ஓப்பனிங் ஆஃப் யூ ஸ்டேஷன் டியூப் இருக்கு கெனல் ஆஃப் ஒரிஜின் ஆஃப் டென்சர் டிம்பானை கெனல் ஆஃப் ஒரிஜின் ஆஃப் டென்சர் டிம்பானை தென் யூ கோயிண்ட் ஆஃப் கெனல் ஆஃப் யூகியர் அண்ட் பீட்ரோ டிம்பானிக் ஃபிஷர் So you have this petrotympanic fissure. I'll tell you one by one. Number one, opening of your eustachian tube. What are the, some facts on eustachian tube? I'll tell you some facts of eustachian tube. Your eustachian tube is going to be at birth. If the length of the path, you know, half the arm. As the length of adult. So 13 to 18 mm adult. It reaches adult size by 7 years of age. It is wider, shorter and more horizontal and flaccid in children. Which makes them prone for the retrograde reflex. of your nasopharyngeal secretion to your middle ear adinal da usually solvanga in the middle ear vandu nasopharyngeal secretions okay va so example or common cold varudhu or viral infections varudhu so that is going to regurgitate retrograde transport agi so that is going to come to your ear and that may cause middle ear infections so that is one clinical anatomy which is present here and your eustachian tube ventilatory function is less efficient in a children than when you consider a adult clear up okay now coming towards the opening of your eustachian tube your eustachian tube usually connects the middle ear cavity with your nasopharynx lateral one third on the bony or go medial two third on the fibrocartilaginous or go the fibrocartilaginous portion of your eustachian tube that is usually it needs a support so bone ko or support thevai illa na or cartilage ku support thevai so that is why you have this osman pad of fat the uh, you have the you have this uh, fibrocartilaginous nasopharyngeal opening irukku illa so adu vand present 1.25 cm behind and below your posterior end of inferior turbinate so posterior end of inferior turbinate like you can see this eustachian tube opening so length over 36 mm the junction of your bony and cartilaginous part you call it as a isthmus it is an angle of 45 degree with horizontal it is going to aerate and drain your middle ear they are going to maintain the middle ear pressure between plus 50 to minus 50 water so eustachian tube remains closed and opens intermittently during swallowing yawning and sneezing the tensor palatine muscle plays a very important major role in opening of tube okay now i will tell about the canal of origin of tensor tympani muscle so in the tensor tympani abbingra muscle irukku pathinga so and the canal vande idu vande enga irukku nu paathona usually the tensor tympani it is situated in the roof of your eustachian tube so they are going to origin from that canal in the anterior wall of middle ear then they are going to run medially where its tendon winds around the process of cocleiformis then it is going to turn laterally to get attached to the upper part of angle of malleus so upper part of angle of malleus la poi attach up so in the tensor tympani it is nothing but the first arch derivative so nerve of its first arch so the nerve of its first arch na and it's a mandibular nerve so through anterior motor nerve anterior motor nerve motor branch okay va through anterior or motor branch mandibular nerve la nu varudhu so what is the action whenever you are going to have a loud sound when you are going to have a loud noise the tensor tympani is going to contract and they are going to pull the neck of malleus medially thereby decreasing the sound conduction so next you are going to talk about this canal of yugier canal of yugier abdina na it's a exit site it is a exit site for corda tympani from your middle ear it's a exit site for the corda tympani from your middle ear okay va well, then you are going to have this petrotympanic suture what is this petrotympanic fissure 
so remember it's otherwise called as glycerian fissure why there is an attachment of anterior ligament of malleus and the entry site of the anterior tympanic artery sometimes kerala of you here opens into your petrotympanic fissure therefore i am very am focused on this petrotympanic fissure next comes a very important part posterior wall okay posterior wall is a common wall between your middle ear and your mastoid so middle ear to mastoid in order inge yel important structures irukku inge ethana important structures irukku yel irukku okay va idukku munadi paatha anterior la naalu da irukku ana posterior la motha yel irukku enna enna irukku yel i'll tell you number 1 aditus ad antrum number 1 aditus ad antrum so this is a communication that is going to be lying between the middle ear and your antrum next you are going to have this facial nerve third one pyramid Fourth one sinus tympani, fifth one CT nerve entry. Okay, quarter tympani nerve entry. Sixth one is fossa inscribis, and then seventh one is your facial rhesus, which I will now deal separately. Number one, aditus ad antrum. Is that one? Aditus ad antrum. Okay, so it is a opening present in the upper border through which your mastoid antrum is going to open into the attic. So what is the relationship? I'll tell you. Medial, lateral, inferior, superior. Now let's go. superior உங்களுக்கு என்ன இருக்கும் अगेन எது மிடில் இயர் இருக்கோ அதே தான் தட் இஸ் யுவர் டெக்மன் ஆன்ட்ரி ஏன் நான் இத பத்தி பேசுறேன்னா அடிட்டஸ் அட் ஆன்ட்ரம் இஸ் ஆல்சோ டு மார்க் क्वेश्चन அதுக்கு அத கொஞ்சம் டெப்தா நான் சொல்றேன் மீடியலா என்ன இருக்கு போனி ப்ரோமினன்ஸ் ஆஃப் ஹாரிசண்டல் செமி சர்க்குலர் கேனல் லேட்டரலா யூ கோயிங் டு ஆஃப் தி ஸ்போசா இன்கடஸ் அண்ட் இன்ஃபீரியரா யூ கோயிங் டு ஆஃப் தி ஃபெலோப்பியன் கேனல் ஆஃப் ஃபேஷியல் நர்வ் அண்ட் அண்ட் சூப்பிரலி டெக்மன் ஆன்ட்ரி சோ இங்க பாருங்க மேலே டெக்மன் ஆன்ட்ரி இருக்கு அடிட்டஸ் ஆன்ட்ரம்க்கு மீடியலா என்ன இருக்கு லேட்டரலா என்ன இருக்கு ஃபோசா இன்கடஸ் இருக்கு மீடியலா என்ன இருக்கு போனி prominence of horizontal semicircular canal pinadi apra you superiorly tegmana and tri and inferiorly fallopian canal for your facial nerve okay i am focusing okay i am just remember i am just focusing at this point okay i am just focusing upon this point okay va na vandu vera point edukala na inda point pathi mattum dhan pesuren aditus adatra aditus adatra of near keela vandu pathaengana you are going to have the facial nerve isn't it you are going to have the facial nerve that's why i am going to talk about the facial nerve then comes the pyramid where is this pyramid so this is called as your pyramid why so this point okay this is your pyramid sinus tympani mela irukla adha so in the pyramid ngade it's a bony projection on the posterior wall from which your stapedius gets origin okay stapedius muscle is going to attach to the neck of stapes the stapedius muscle like the suprastructure of stapes they are derived from the second arch and it is going to be supplied by facial nerve now you tell me along with me first facial nerve first brachial arch and it is supply pannu mandibular nerve second brachial arch and it is supply pannu facial nerve clear up so there is a important function for this particular uh, pyramid why because it serves attachment for your stapedius muscle so stapedius muscle attachment te enga ku pogum na neck of stapes ku pogum idhukku peru da stapedial reflex so ipo enna pannona or loud voice irundha idu contract aagi ungala tm a strong ga nikke okay or my flex da vechukku sorry stretch da vechukku so that your sound is not going to be affecting your idhu so appo enna pannona sound kammi aakidum so that inner ear ku pombodhu loud sounds illama irukum okay va then comes your facial now so this facial now at the junction of medial and posterior wall your tympanic or horizontal segment of facial now takes a lateral turn onto your posterior wall known as second genu it then ascends vertically down behind the pyramid and that is called as mastoid segment or your vertical segment of your seventh now then you have the sinus tympani so where is the sinus tympani இந்த இந்த பார்ட் தான் சைனஸ் டிம்பானின் சொல்றோம் சோ இட் இஸ் a area medial to the bulge of vertical or descending or mastoid part of your facial nerve okay va so and above you are going to have ponticulus below you are going to have subiculum ponticulus subiculum so it is considered as a hidden area of middle ear you cannot draw you cannot see and common site for residual cholecystoma okay cholecystoma now coming towards the corda tympani entry just before the exit of okay just before the exit of your uh, snf the facial nerve okay what happens they are going to be giving rise to a corda tympani branch okay va so it give rise to the corda tympani branch which ascends up and enters into the middle ear cavity okay it is going to ascend up and it gives rise to the middle in the middle ear cavity they are going to be giving rise through the opening in the posterior 
Okay, wow. so when it exits from your stylomastoid foramen, the facial nerve is giving rise to a caudal tympanic branch, which is going to ascend up and enter into the middle ear cavity through the opening in the posterior wall. So between the fibrous and mucous layer of your tympanic membrane, it runs in between the neck of malleus and body of incus. Then they exit the middle ear through the canal of U gear in the anterior wall. So your caudal tympanic gives taste sensation to the anterior two third of the tongue. Is that getting clear? Huh? Next comes the facial recess. So depression in the posterior wall, lateral to your pyramid, you call it as a facial recess. Superiorly, you're going to have your fossa incubus. Laterally, you're going to have the cauda tympani and tympanic annulus. And medially, you're going to have the descending seventh cranial nerve. Surgical importance on the padena, canal up mastodectomy or intact canal wall mastodectomy is done here, where opening is made on the posterior wall to access the middle ear cavity through your mastoid. So that is why facial recess is important. Identify it is important and posterior tympanectomy uh, approach where the electrodes of your cochlear in implant are introduced into middle ear from your mastoid through your facial recess. Now coming to your middle ear. You will have a diagram for the middle ear. Now what you need to do is easy. Okay. So promontory. Middle ear. You are going to have this promontory. Promontory is going to have the back side. Inner ear. Your cochlea or basal turn is going to produce a bulge into your middle ear. That is called as promontory. So tympanic plexus is present in promontory. It is going to sense high frequencies. So, then protest processes cochleformis. So this is a hook like structure which is present anterior superiorly on the medial wall. Okay, so it is a major landmark for tensor tympani muscle and it is going to a, take a turn and move laterally to attach to the handle of malleus. It acts as a landmark for first genio of facial nerve. The geniculate ganglion is present in the first genio. Okay, next comes the third one that is bulge of the lateral semicircular canal. So your lateral semicircular canal, the bulge of the lateral canal is present on the most posterior superior portion of the medial wall just above the horizontal or tympanic segment of facial nerve. Okay, okay, this oval window, they are going to lie posterior superior or the middle wall of the food process of stapes, overlying it, which is going to separating the vestibule from your middle ear. This is going to lie inferior to the horizontal segment of facial now. Okay, well, then you have this round window, oval window, round window. So you can see here, right? So this is your oval with round window. This is your oval window. So oval window, it lies posterior superior on the medial wall of the medial wall along with the food process of your stapes whereas your round window lies posterior inferior on the medial wall is covered by the secondary tympanic membrane. I will tell you about this and it separates from the middle ear from the scalar tympanic. Next coming to your middle ear, your facial nerve. This nerve enters the middle ear on the medial wall where it takes a U-turn which it takes a U-turn that is the first genu. This is going to continue horizontally backwards and towards posterior wall as a horizontal segment. Now coming to the lateral wall. So lateral wall is a common wall between your external auditory canal and your middle ear. This is formed by the tympanic membrane below and scutum above. So key the tympanic membrane is called scutum. So scutum is nothing but a bone above the pars placida forming the lateral wall of attic. So now coming to the compartments of middle ear. Your middle ear is going to be consisting of tegment tympani. Key is the epitympanum. Adhikapra meso tympanum, apra hypo tympanum. Okay, wow. so either one the parts flaccida, this is your parts tensa, and this space between your uh, between your malleus, uh, malleus ko, ungloda scutum ko nodula ko kore, either one the patagna, you call it as prusac space. Okay, now coming to your tympanic cavity, epitympanum, meso tympanum, hypo tympanum, abdin solvanga. So, either this is epitympanum, meso tympanum, hypo tympanum. Now coming to the mastoid. So, mastoid is separate away essay question, usually. So, mastoid is posterior to your middle ear cavity lies your mastoid. This is a pneumatic bone. Uh, air filled air cavity that is enclosing numerous air cells giving honeycomb appearance so it is the largest and most prominent air cell is called as your mastoid antrum now coming to your boundaries okay well, boundary park law so lot of superiorly lies your base of skull that is your tegma antri that separates it from the dura overlying your temporal temporal bone in the middle cranial fossa and tegma antri is also called as dural plate and posterior you are going to have the base of skull which separates from the sigmoid sinus plate. So what is the sinodural angle? I'll tell you. Sinodural angle is nothing but it is formed between the dural plate superiorly and sinus plate posteriorly. So superior and 
ड्यूरल प्लेट पोस्टीरियर सैनस प्लेट सुपीरियर ड्यूरल प्लेट लैटरली Okay, wow. and inferior to the base of the skull, separating it from the endolymphatic sac and posterior cranial fossa. Surgical landmark of your endolymphatic sac on this wall. It's an imaginary line drawn from your lateral semicircular canal, bisecting posterior semicircular canal. So this is otherwise called as Donatsen's line. So this is otherwise called as Donatsen's line. This is your Sitelli's angle, sinus plate, dural plate. As in those other angle, when the pathena you call it as Sitelli's angle. Clear? Okay. So the surgical landmark of endolymphatic sac on this wall is an imaginary line that is going to be drawn from the lateral semicircular canal by setting your posterior semicircular canal. That is called as Donatsen's line. So in the Donatsen's line, a key lada endolymphatic sac is there. Then you come for the Troutsman triangle. On the medial wall of your antrum, Troutsman triangle is there. It is bounded superiorly by superior petrosal sinus. Posteriorly, you are going to have the sigmoid sinus. Anteriorly, you are going to have the bony labyrinth. This is used as a landmark to approach your posterior cranial fossa. It is also potential site for okay. It is also potential site for spread of infection from your mastoid towards your cerebellum. So it is going to be a very important site because the spread of infection occurs here. So spread of infection is going to occur here. How does spread of infection occur? Ago spread of infection. How does occur? Ago na. Okay, wow. Potential site is na from your mastoid to cerebellum. Or connection, right? No. And the connection only it serves as a potential site for the uh, infection to spread. So now coming to the lateral. Lateral, I am going to have the antrum. So lateral, I am going to have the lateral. I am going to have the antrum. Lateral, I am going to have the antrum. Okay, wow. In the antrum, when they are going to lie, one point five centimeter deep to it. So this antrum is going to lie one point five centimeter. This antrum is going to lie one point five centimeter deep to it. Now coming to anterior, it is bounded by the posterior wall of middle ear, and antrum is connected to the attic by posterior wall. So, or chinnu two mark. What are the various mastoid cells? So, zygomatic cells, tegmen cells, petrous uh, perisinous cell, marginal cell, tip cell, retrofacial cell, perilabyrinthine cells, and squamous cells. इतना नाम हो चुका है तो रुम्बा कस्टमर आ रहे हैं ना बोलेंगे अब नहीं ना सोल्विंग आप पर T R P. Okay, you know the T R P, right? So T R P S M two. Okay, T R P S M two. Okay, I'm going to call it as T R P S M two. What is that? T R P. How we tell this? T stands for tegmen cells, and R stands for retrofacial cells. P stands for perisinous cells, and S stands for squamous cells. T R P S. Again, I repeat: tegmen cells, retrofacial cells, and then perisinous cells. And you're going to have the uh, squamous cell. Then you have this M2, rindi M. Okay, P is rindi P actually. One perisinous, in one perilabyrinthine. M2 la rind. One is what? You're going to have marginal cells. What is the other M which you're going to have? Anyone? Marginal cells are there. Almost all are missed. So, what are you going to do? You're going to have TRPS M2. Okay, TRPSM. Two, abhi notch kla. So something you remember. So peri labyrinth in cells. So may include our marginal cells. Okay, wow. Well, now coming towards the ossicles. The ossicles are going to be very important because they are going to be conducting the sound energy from your tympanic membrane to your oval window. So moon ossicle is the malleus incus tapis. Only the very one. All malleus and that where they develop are the only one. First break is large. Okay. So malleus consists of head, neck, handle, and a lateral and anterior process. It is going to measure eight millimeter in length. Head The neck angle lay or oh, it is going to lie in the attic. Manubrium is embedded in the fibrous layer of tympanic membrane. So manubrium is going to be present in the fibrous. Manubrium is going to be present in the fibrous layer of tympanic membrane. Now, okay, fibrous membrane of tympanic membrane. So lateral process appears as a knob-like projection on outer surface of tympanic membrane, and they are going to provide attachment to the anterior and posterior malleal folds. So this is your malleus. This is your incus. This is your stapes. Okay, wow. So malleus again. I am saying so. Malleus is going to consist of head. It is going to consist of neck. It is going to consist of uh, handle. It is going to be consisting of the lateral process. This is your lateral process. This is your handle. Clear. Next incus. 
is always called as unwell. So it consists of a body and short process and long process. Body and short process lies to a tick. So long process hangs vertically and it is going to form the ant artico. It's going to be forming a okay incudostepedial joint. Okay, incudostepedial incus stapes incudio stapedial joint with the head of stapes now coming to the stapes tanya two marks ketrukanga so smallest part of the bone of the body it is going to measure 3.5 mm they are going to consist of head neck anterior posterior crura and foot plate the foot plate is positioned in oval window by annular ligament now coming to the muscle so you have two muscles tensor tympani and stapedius now coming to the tensor tympani so i already told you tensor tympani lies above the eustachian tube it's a tendon that turns around your processus coccyformis and passes laterally origin on the bony tunnel above the osseous part of your eustachian tube inserts at the neck of malleus just below the neck of malleus and nerve supply is bus brachial arch that's all i already told you it's a mandibular division of trigeminal nerve now we coming to the stapedius muscle stapedius muscle again it's a second brachial arch derivative on contraction it is going to be dampening the loud sound and it prevents the noise tra trauma to the inner ear okay va wow. origin on the cranial cavity lende and uh, canal within the pyramid then uh, in insertion of it inserts into the neck of stapes now nerve supply facial nerve because that is a nerve of second brachial arch and uh, they are going to be the nerve to stapedius branch now coming to the function it is going to be acoustic reflex it dampens your middle ear mechanism it's going to be gaining control mechanism and it reduction in the self generated sound now coming to the mucosa and middle ear cleft is lined by ciliated columnar epithelium in the anterior and inferior part and mucosal changes to uh, your adeno okay mucosal changes occur okay va so this is going to be changing in the posterior border the posterior border la there can be a changes okay va posterior border la there will be a changes your arctic and mastoid arcels are lined by flat non ciliated epithelium and your eustachian tube by the ciliated pseudo stratified columnar epithelium with uh, your uh, mucous glands which is present in the submucosa okay va see there are several mucous glands which are present in the submucosa now coming to the blood supply you have this arterial supply internal carotid external carotid internal carotid la the carato tympanic branch petrous part la varu and external carotid artery la moon artery supply padu adu maxillary artery maxillary artery la anterior and maxillary artery major contributor middle meningeal artery and artery of pterygoid canal middle meningeal artery in petrous branch and superior tympanic artery and me superior tympanic artery vand main it supplies your tensor tympani muscle and your artery of pterygoid muscle vand pathana they run along the eustachian tube posterior auricular artery they are stylomastoid artery which is major contributor and ascending pharyngeal artery tympanic branch is also very important now coming to the venous drainage pterygoid venous plexus is there superior petrosal sinus irukku sigmoid sinus இருக்குறாங்க <laughs> Jacobson's nerve okay the tympanic branch of glossopharyngeal nerve otherwise called as Jacobson's nerve it carries secreto motor fibers to your parotid gland okay so what is the uh, pathway so your inferior salivary nucleus lend the cranial 9 ku varudhu 9th cranial nerve lend the Jacobson's nerve Jacobson's nerve lend the tympanic plexus appra it goes to your uh, lesser pterygoid nerve then aortic ganglion then uh, auricular temporal nerve and parotid gland ku pogudhu adha pathway and your sympathetic fibers they are going to be called, is called as your cortico tympanic nerve sympathetic plexus are present in the internal carotid artery suthi and lymphatic drainage pathinga na middle ear vand retropharyngeal and parotid lymph node your eustachian tube vand retropharyngeal lymph node so with this the essay comes to an end okay so just remember okay just remember i'll tell you in brief uh, okay i'll tell you in brief just remember middle ear is very important topic middle ear is a very important topic and you need to understand that this middle ear can be asked as an essay part of the middle ear can be asked as a short note and even when you go to a next or neat exam this middle ear anatomy is very important they may ask numerous questions they can ask about the openings in each wall so that itself contributes to very important uh, aspect okay so all the best 
we will be discussing every day we will maximum try to discuss one topic and we will discuss the mcqs of them in the group or again i will make a video of mcq discussion let's discuss it on live okay you can just uh, put down the answers of them in live so that we can also discuss in the chat box on different questions that can be asked from this particular topic in the subsequent sessions let's meet and for today thank you so much for watching have a good day